Mr. Matthias Ottoson, welcome to Linear Rock. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Great to have you. And actually, you just told me that you have an Italian car right outside your house, which is oh, your yes. girlfriend car. Okay. Which is a Fiat yes. 500, right? Okay. Sure so, that, that's, that's great. So, that would bring good luck. And, you uh, think so? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. So, new Necromant album, Temple of Hall, is finally out. And. Yeah. Uh, you know, the epic light and dark single behind the veil of eyes, which is clear in its intention, but dark in the mood, uh, mm -hmm. is like the perfect song to present the album. Uh, a piece which you defined cold as ice and hot as hell at the same time, like a joyful tune about darkness and death. Actually, it defines your identity pretty mm -hmm good let's say and it speaks volumes what's behind the veil of necromant's eyes and basically guides your inspiration well uh that was very eloquently put i appreciate it uh i uh, i think our inspirations has always been the same pretty much we we do have a strong foundation all three of us in classic heavy metal such as uh, judas priest man of war rainbow uh, Black Sabbath as well. Uh, our main foundations as a band has always been, I would say, Black Sabbath. Uh, yeah. which, uh, I mean, it, it, it's very easy to be inspired by what they did in the early 70s, of course. Uh, but you don't have to sound like Black Sabbath to be inspired by Black Sabbath, I think. Uh, there are a lot, and I mean a lot of bands in Sweden and uh, Western Europe that are kind of like these, you know, Black Sabbath bands. Yeah. Uh, and I, I like pretty much all of them that I've heard, but we're not one of those. We are a classic heavy metal band, and that's the way I've always seen it. So you, you feel like Black Sabbath children, but with a look to the future. That's what you mean? Sure. I mean, absolutely. Black Sabbath contributes mostly to my inspiration with their sense of uh, rhythm, I would say. Like the sense of groove and the sense of swing, which you may not find as much in, say, Judas Priest. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like everybody says, you know, when, when you have your inspirations from when you were a child and when you were an adolescent, that kind of stays with you forever. Right. And uh, so you, you are mentioning, you know, all classic bands and you are also so very connected to your roots also geographically, let's say, mm. um, that this album is mainly dedicated to your hometown. Vargon, hope I pronounce it correctly, uh, which is located uh, between the twin mountains of Hallenberg and Hunneberg, uh, two natural giants monuments of local myths and stories, which have now inspired you guys as well. Mm. Um, and then there's also the big lake, uh, Van Ern. Okay. <laughs> I, but, you know, I imagine songs like The Woods, uh, written in some special environment. I don't know why, but I don't face you guys, you know, composing certain songs just within the four walls of a studio. Am I correct? Mm, you're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, we don't write songs in the studio at all. Uh, we don't have time for that. Uh, ergo, we don't have enough money to write songs in the studio, because being in a studio is expensive. So uh, we, we tend to write uh, everything. Everything is really absolutely done when we get to the studio. Obviously, you tweak it a little bit as you move on when you figure out what sounds good. But yeah, it's most definitely pre-done, I would say, when we enter the studio for sure. And uh, uh, the way we're talking about our inspirations, that's absolutely right. Uh, I would not call it a tribute to our hometown, though. I mean, it's the, a lot of the lyrics are inspired by places around our hometown. But I don't consider it really a tribute. We have mixed emotions about our hometown. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, you know, it's a very small town about, I think, 6,000 people, something like that. Um, the, the name, as you pronounced perfectly, is uh, Varjön. Mm -hmm. uh, it basically means wolf island in Swedish. Uh, okay. and there are no wolves and there, it's not an island, so it's a stupid name, but hey. 
Uh, and they actually saw one wolf the other day, I remember now, but uh, wow. it's very rare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, yeah, and so I, I wouldn't really call it a tribute, but it's a. Uh, it, it's it's very much inspired by the local folklore and legends surrounding these two these two mountains, which I felt was very appropriate to put into a, a heavy metal setting. Which is the strangest place where you got the inspiration for a song, and maybe you wrote a song in like a particular location? For example, the woods was mm. like composed in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it was. I would like to say yes, obviously, but uh, no, it, it's not composed in the woods. It's more of uh, composed with the woods in mind, I would suppose. Uh, but uh, yeah, one of the tracks from our newest album is called Heckle Klint, the instrumental track. Yeah. Uh, that is actually the name of a place on one of these mountains, okay. which uh, is. If, if you've seen the horror movie uh, Midsommar, Midsummer. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Do you know the way that they jump from the top of the mountain to their death? Yes. Yeah, that is what's called in Swedish an ettestupa. I don't think okay. there's a really a translation. But that place, Heckle Klint, is one of those places where people used to jump off from. Okay. So it's, uh, it's very... I mean, you could obviously say that it has a certain vibe when you go there and stuff like that. I'm not sure that's true, but... Uh, I, I, I take the inspiration from those places and I view it through a thick lens of what I want it to be, pretty much. And then I write the lyrics for the song. Okay. Um, you are actually a power trio, but are you a trio by choice or it simply happened, you know, this way? Because maybe you couldn't find other musicians with your same approach, belief and attitude. Well, I mean, I think it's... Uh, a combination of a choice and forced upon us pretty much. Uh, I didn't sing before I, before me and Adam started this band. Uh, we tried out a couple of singers and we just didn't work out for many reasons. Um, and we had to have a singer. So I kind of had to get good at it, you know, and fucking quick because we were going to release or record an album. Oh, wow. uh, so I tried to work on it as hard as I could. And, and for the question of being a, um, a power tree, I mean, it is easier in ways. Uh, it is easier because it's easier to get together and rehearse. It's easier to book gigs and it's easier to play live because there's less uh, less instruments on stage very much that can fuck things up. Yeah. But uh, I mean, of course, it would be easier to have a, a rhythm guitarist as well when you're approaching the more like epic side of heavy metal. That, uh, of course, helps. But also when you're a trio, you kind of have to make it work. So you get a little bit forced forced creativity on yourself. But going deeper, you know, in the labor of the work of composition, you know, to recreate, you know, such the fine atmospheres as you do. You said it's easiest being a trio, but can be tough as well, maybe at the same time, because you're just three persons and you have a lot on your shoulders. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely true. Uh, if one of us makes a mistake, it's for all the world to hear, pretty much. Uh, and that's uh, <laughs> that's not a perk, <laughs> believe me. But, uh, you know, people have been playing in trios for a lot of years in a, in a heavy metal setting, so obviously it can be done. And I, I do think that it's, it's kind of good to be a little bit challenged creatively than that you just have three people that you have to make it work and make it sound huge with only us three and when we achieve that it's a very it's a very nice feeling of um, success i guess to be able to to do it and um you say it's it's easiest and that you you always go in the studio with the work pretty much done but how long does it take for you to have an album ready, for example, is something that comes quick or because of the atmosphere and the long, you know, process, maybe the labor of composition takes long? No, I mean, we are, we are, we are very quick. Uh, quick. Sure. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, I mean, it's my favorite time to be in a band when you have released an album and you're kind of allowed to go and work on new stuff. So for me, that happens rather fast. Uh, I tend to write the most of the songs. That's not a rule in, in any way in the band, but I just seem to have the most time for it. 
so I, I I tend to write all the skeletons for the songs, and I mean right now I think I would say that 75% of the next album is pretty much done, so we are very fast. Uh, but it really comes out of joy of playing, you know, and it's very it's very exciting to 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 bring a song to the rehearsal space and show the other guys. It's a it's a great feeling when they when they like it, yeah. and I I do think that. We we have so much in common musically in the band. You know, we are really grown up on the same stuff, so we know what the other two people will like. So it, it's very easy to write for this band. It's uh, it's very rewarding, I would say. So you mean you write most of the stuff and then you arrange it as a trio, as a band? Yeah, yeah, pr oh. pretty much. I I, uh, I tend to make the the skeletons of the songs, and then I bring it to the other guys, and we tweak and turn it a little bit until uh, until we feel somewhat satisfied with it. Um, you have been called a striking example of typically Swedish gloom. Oh, yeah. uh, what do you say in your defense or are you very proud of it? <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of hard to be proud about being gloomy. <laughs> that, 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 that's not a generally not a good thing, but uh, I mean, I'm, I'm extremely proud of being called a good example of anything regarding classic heavy metal, the way I see it. That's, uh, of course, it's very flattering. Um, however, the, the Swedish gloom, that is not just something that comes out in music in Sweden. The, the people here are very, they're nice, but they're quite reserved. You know, if you stand like five people at a bus stop, if you talk to anyone there, they will consider you a maniac. That is not normal in Sweden. Okay. You don't. No, 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 no. You don't <laughs> sit next to anyone in the bus if there's free seats. They they will think you're either drunk or insane. That is. Uh, so the, the I mean the classic Swedish gloom is uh, it's forever prevalent in in everyday life in Sweden for sure. But I've been to Sweden quite a few times at Sweden Rock Festival, and after a few beers, believe me, a lot of people are happier even in Sweden. You, you have never been to Sweden if you've just been to the Sweden Rock Festival. That, okay. is, not Sweden. that is not how it looks 99% out of the year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I trust you. Um, so this is the fourth album. What's the real evolution here in this album in Temple of All? Well, I mean, the topic of evolution in, in a band and especially your own band is, is kind of hard to, to wrap your head around because I think evolution in a lot of bands that I like has not been only for the better, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of bands have kind of uh, died on the altar of evolution just because they want to make something new, something different or unique or whatever. So I don't think that evolution is necessarily all good in a band. Uh, however, if you play together for a number of years and you have your chiseled out style, you kind of need evolution to keep your interest. That is, uh, I mean, that's a natural progression of things, I think. Um, on this record, the, the evolution is going in the same way that has been going ever since we started, I think. We are really moving closer to the core of uh, what we want to do and what we want to sound like as a band. Um, and that is becoming more, more, um, a more distilled version of ourselves. I would say we we boil everything down until only the good stuff remains. You know, on the, our, I like all our albums, but on the first albums there is a lot of extra fat on them. You know, that you may not may not need really. Uh, and the further we go along, I think the more we like render out that fat and become more efficient. Okay, that's clear. Okay, so we talked about the boots. Uh, so let's watch the video of it. And do you want to introduce, introduce it for us and tell us maybe where you filmed it and something more about the song? And then you actually introduce the video to us. Well, the, the video is it's a very basic video. We, we wanted to make a, a real easy thing for people to watch and just to get a good look on how we look when we do when we do our thing pretty much it's basically a it's just a an ad for the song i would say we we, we look uh, extremely cool in cool lighting that is the whole point of the video 
Okay, so let's watch it and stick there for a few more questions after it. Yeah. Is it more limiting or limitless to be a cult band such as you are? I mean, was this your ambition or do you want more actually? Well, it, it's, it's your question, do we want bigger gigs and more fame? And, uh, right. I mean, of course. <laughs> Uh, th there's no uh, that's a that's a dumb question <laughs> no 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 it's, of course we do i mean we 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 love playing and we we would have been playing together i think even if we had no success at all but uh, maybe not in a, in such a serious manner but of course we do all musicians want uh, we not necessarily for the you know the fame and the money or whatever that that's not the point it's we always had a goal that we wanted to be a, somewhat of a main staple in the uh, Swedish and the local Euro European uh, festival summer, for instance. That we uh, could uh, play festivals during the summer uh, on a regular basis and uh, you know, be, really be a part of that. We have done a little bit of that, but um, of course we want more. We love playing and we love playing the songs that we do, so uh, sure, absolutely. But I mean, would you ever compromise on your sound, you, you know, to have more or it's something that, yes, we want more, but, you know, still remaining ourselves? No, I mean, that is, for me, that's, a, that's not an issue really for me because I, for one, I, I wouldn't know how to write anything that would go down better for people. I, I, I don't know what people like. I don't. I don't have any social media, I don't uh, see a lot of people in my day-to-day -day life, I don't know what they like. I only know what I like and what the other two guys in the band like. And if that gets some traction and makes us able to keep doing this, I'm extremely grateful. But as far as integrity goes, I, I wouldn't change anything for anyone. But I also wouldn't be able to, I think. I can only write this stuff. This is a really... This stuff is really, is really close, it's really near and dear to me. So I can't just change around it, you know. But you changed your name from yeah. Serpent from Serpent to Necromant. Yes. Uh, do, you, do you think that this name represents you any better some way? Uh, what's the story behind this choice? Well, before we were called Necromant, we were called Serpent, as you well know, as you saw us in the Sweden Rock Festival. Right. And, um, yeah, um, I mean, I'm not sure if it's uh, any if it's, if it's a better name, but the name Serpent was around in a couple of bands before we came along, and you know we kind of knew that to begin with as well. But when we started off, it was just me and Adam sitting in a studio with unlimited studio time and unlimited amount of rum, I would suppose. Uh, but we always knew that we had to change it at some point. And when our first album got a little, you know, recognition and a little traction, we felt like, yeah, better now than later. So we, we just have to get it over with. It, it's never a good scenario when you have to change your name after the first record, but it just had to be done. And the first record was called Necromant, so it seemed like an easy choice. Okay. And uh, on the other way around, like, you know, the song King Serpent and the title of the previous album, Snakes and Liars, are a sort of tribute to Serpent? I mean, of course, they're, they're, I would consider those uh, small Easter eggs for the hardcore fans. <laughs> I see. Okay. I got them. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> okay. So, so you mentioned Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, you know, and I also mentioned Pentagram as you know classic bands that inspired you mm. um, but what do you particularly appreciate about new bands of your genre you mentioned that there are you know a lot in on the in the north of Europe and also Eastern Europe is there any name that uh, stick to your mind that you really like what's the state of health you know of extreme metal nowadays in your opinion the state of extreme metal. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I would say the state is very good in in uh, in one aspect of it. Uh, I like the the resurgence of the retro sounds, you know, of the doom stoner type of stuff, because that also carries with it uh, a lot of other resurgence of classic heavy metal and classic rock and so on. And I love that. However, the the state of 
metal as a whole, I'm not too sure about. I I recently listened to a, a playlist on Spotify called New Metal Tracks or something, and I was kind of horrified. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, obviously there are a lot of great bands and most of them are great musicians, absolutely. But the, the stuff that I heard on there was very different from the heavy metal that I grew up with. And I don't mean to sound like a grumpy old man, just though everything was better when I was a kid because I was a kid, you know, yeah. that, that, is, that is not the point. But I would say generally the state is very strong for, for metal music in Sweden. We have a lot of bands. We, we jokingly always say in Sweden, we have no metal fans in Sweden. We only have musicians. So when, when you play local shows in Sweden, you don't have any people going to see the show. They're going to judge your gear because they're all musicians. But uh, yeah, uh, to answer your question, I think the state of, of metal is stronger than I've ever seen, that's for sure. As far as extreme metal goes, that's a different animal in a way. Uh, I'm hugely inspired by a lot of black metal, uh, mm. especially Scandinavian black metal. And I do think that seeps through a bit to our sound. Uh, I, I tend to like all the classic Norwegian bands uh, so the state of that, I'm not too sure, uh, but uh, the state of metal in general, I would say, is, is strong. But why should listeners, you know, that maybe are knowing you tonight for the first time, should go deep and have your records right away, immediately? Because maybe in your, compared to other bands, you have some extra room for, uh, you know, extra qualities. What would you say? How would you convince them? <laughs> well... Uh, of course, I consider my own band to have some extra stuff. Otherwise, I wouldn't be playing in it. But uh, I think that if you if you appreciate straight, you know, unadulterated classic metal, there is something to be found in uh, in Necromant for sure. I mean, we are we are a band that really worships the simplistic outlook on metal. We don't complicate things at all. We we do it the easy way. We, uh, to quote Fenris of Dark Throne, we, we bake bread, not cake. Okay, that's pretty clear. All right. Um, so you never played in Italy. No. Will next tour include finally Italy? Um, and also I know that, you know, you can't wait to go back on the road because you stand, as you already mentioned, for the organic approach, um, you know, then no social media, but you like the stage, meeting people, uh, doing mm -hmm. gigs, uh, traveling, um, which are, you know, I mean, social media is actually you, useful, but um, it's an imme immediate tool. Uh, but you prefer the good old way, right? So far. That, so y you can't wait to go back on the road. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we did, um, we have done two gigs after the pandemic so far. And uh, obviously it was great, it was a lot of fun. It's also terrifying because you don't, you're not sure at what you're doing anymore because we've been away from the stage for two years. And for a band like us, you know, there are a lot of bands that play way more than we do. But in the underground scene in Sweden, we are considered pretty active. So we, you know, being good live is, is, is like milk. You have to have it fresh. It's like, yeah. uh, it's like running or anything. You lose it very fast and it's, it's a good ego check, really. Because when you're sitting at home in your chamber and writing songs and rehearsing with the band, you can you can think that you're all that. But when you're standing on stage and uh, maybe the mic doesn't work, the bass is a little out of tune, uh, it's weird. You know, it's, a, it's an extremely useful ego check, I think. But uh, as far as playing in Italy, I would love to play in Italy. I love Italy as a country. I've been there several times as a, as a civilian, but um, our planned tour for this uh, fall in uh, November, that consists of only Germany uh, so far. But uh, you know how it is now with the pandemic, nobody knows anything was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, so we, we just tend to make our plans and hopefully we can follow through on them. And I really hope that we could come to Italy and play sometime in the not so distant future. But do you have Swedish gigs? Uh, I mean, you told me that you will play tomorrow, actually. You have a gig tomorrow, so tell us more about it. Well, we have our release gig in a neighboring uh, city, 
uh, that is it's not really our home city but it, it's it's near enough um, it's uh, it's a thing that we've always done after each album we have had a release gig at the same place and it gets really you get like a tradition of it you know we uh, it, it's a really good place we get really really cramped and really sweaty so I, I look forward to it immensely actually will it go live streaming some way or, or not <laughs> not this gig, uh, but we have had uh, some discussions about doing something like that uh, just because of the pandemic. You, I can see that a lot of other bands have done that and I I highly appreciate it when bands do that because that means that you can just sit at home and not have to go through the hassle of taking a bus somewhere to see a band, you know. Yeah. I live out in the goddamn countryside here, so it's far for me. Since Christmas is coming, do you live close to Lapland, close to Santa Claus Village, or uh, or not? <laughs> no, 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 no. I think I'm closer to Italy than I am to Lapland, actually. Okay, yeah. so you're you're in the south of Sweden. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're close okay. to Gothenburg. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I think I honestly think that if I would take a car and drive south, that would be. It would be quicker to go to Italy than it would be to go to Lapland for me. Wow, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Perfectly clear. All right. So, Merry Christmas, by the way. Thanks for your time, Matthias. It's been a pleasure. And hopefully we will meet you in Italy sooner or later, maybe next year already. And now we're going to close this interview with the title track of the new album, Temple of Hall. So, would you introduce it for us? Yes, of course. Uh, for for starters, thank you very much for having me. It's been a, a really fun interview to do here with you today. Uh, the title track from our album is a song that uh, is kind of old uh, on this record. Actually, it's, it's a couple of years old. It's been it's been brewing a bit, you know. Uh, but we finally got to recording it, and I'm uh, very happy with it. It, it uh, talks about the twin mountains of our hometown, and uh, if you're Italian, I highly suggest that you come here and look at the moose. Okay. Thank you very much, Matthias. See you, you next much. time. Ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Grazie. <laughs> Grazie mille.